Look at this. Look at this. Hello? Hello? Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto. The Lucky Pharaohs. I was just sitting on the sofa, looking at my phone, and look at what's going on behind me. It's Nancy, Richard, and Ziggy. All sleeping in one bed together. It's 11 a.m. There's Sammy, and I think that is Ziggy up there. And I had to run some early errands today. I just got home. The OG4 are eating breakfast, and I just came down here to feed the Lucky 7, but look what I just found. Look at that. That is the security camera that I use down here. And look what they did. They knocked it down from where it was because I keep it high up. And that way I get a good view of this entire room. They knocked it completely down. It's on the floor. Not only did they take it down from where it was, but they also unplugged it. What is going on in here? You okay, boo? It's 8.10 a.m. And I'm testing out my camera since I just got it back from repair. And it seems to be good as new, but I don't know how it's functioning. So here's Simba. He's taking a bath. Here's Splash. He's still sleeping. We have another gray and cold day today. We haven't seen the sun in so long. Every day has been gray and cloudy. It is 10.50 a.m. and here's Boo. There's Simba. There's Splash. 
Let me tell you what happened last night. So at 3 a.m., I woke up and just kind of like laying in bed, trying to fall back asleep. And all of a sudden I heard a cat vomiting and I was like, oh no, who is this? So I got up and it was Boo. He vomited on his day sofa and he vomited on the new rug in his room. And it was a lot of vomit. Like it looked like he gorged himself on dinner. There was a lot of food. And last night the cats had rabbit. They had freeze dried rabbit, which I rehydrated for them. And they also had some canned rabbit. And they've been having that once a week and no one has had issues with it. Um, but maybe Boo really enjoys that meal, so he ate a lot. I cleaned that up, and then I went to bed, except I couldn't fall asleep. So I picked up my phone and started scrolling through videos on YouTube. And next thing I know, it's an hour later, it's about 4 a.m., and I hear the vomiting sound again. And I was like, oh no, who is it now? Um, it was still Boo. And he vomited on the new blankets that I put on the day sofa. Um, you know, when I took off the bedding that was on the day sofa and put it in the wash, I put some fresh blankets on it. And sure enough, he vomited on the fresh blankets. He also vomited here in the living room on the floor. So I was happy about that because it's easier to clean up on the floor. After that, I went back to bed. I didn't hear any more vomiting. And here's Boone now. It's almost 11 a.m., so it's almost seven hours later. He's really not feeling that great. Like, he's not his usual self. He doesn't want to walk around. I should also mention that I think he also has diarrhea um, because he used the litter box in my bedroom sometime earlier this morning, and it was super stinky. And then I looked at the litter box, and it looks like there's some diarrhea in it. So it could be that Boo just has some kind of bug right now, some kind of gastritis or something. Stella had something similar to this. Um, not too long ago and hopefully it'll pass we'll give it a few days and if it doesn't pass within a few days then you know we'll talk to a vet about it but right now I am gonna give him a special breakfast and what this is is some of the freeze-dried chicken that Boo loves I also had some homemade chicken broth in my refrigerator so I heated up the homemade chicken broth and I added it to the freeze-dried chicken to rehydrate it. And let's see if Boo will eat it. Usually if the cats have an upset stomach, they will eat something like this. This is what I made for Simba um, when Simba was vomiting and not feeling well. But it looks like Boo does not want to eat it. Okay. I'm going to leave it here for him if he does want to eat it. Because this will be... You know, soothing on his stomach. It's something just very gentle and bland. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go to the supermarket and just buy some plain chicken breasts and cook some of those up. Maybe he'll like fresh versus rehydrated. And yeah, I know Boo is thinking about eating this. Where's he going to go now? Oh, he's stretching. Look at this. Look at this. All right, so he, he's kind of acting like his normal self, but he's not in a good mood at all, like you could tell just by looking at him. Here's Simba. So I have the window open in Boo's room, the window open in my bedroom, the window open in the living room and the dining room. I wanted to give the cats plenty of options if they wanted to smell air. Boo, you want to eat in here? You want me to bring your chicken in here? I brought his chicken in here. I know he's thinking about it. I think he's just a little bit afraid of eating it and maybe he still has like a bit of a tummy ache or something. He did drink water this morning um, out of the water bowl in my room, out of the water bowl in this room, so he is hydrating himself, which is good. So he's going to be under observation today to make sure he's feeling okay. You want to squeeze up, Boo? You want me to see if you want to squeeze up? The thing is... I've had mixed results with squeeze-ups with regards to tummy troubles like what Boo's dealing with. Sometimes a cat will eat them and it'll be good. Other times a cat will eat them and then they'll just vomit. So I'll let him sit here with the chicken. And if he doesn't want that, then I'll try a churu. I don't think I have any squeeze-ups. I think I have churus. Be nice to each other, please. Be nice to each other, please. Don't worry, Simba. He's just trying to walk by, okay? Come on, Simba. Simba, leave him alone. 
Leave him alone, Simba. Leave him alone. You want to scratch? Usually Boo scratches on scratching posts when he feels happy. And he stretches when he's happy. So it was a good sign that he was stretching. It's also a good sign that he's up here by the window. Are we going to scratch? Simba, you want to leave with me? You want to leave with me, Simba? I think I'm going to take Simba out of the room. Then I'll shut the door. And I'll let Boo just relax in here today. I don't know how much sleep he got last night. Okay, Simba, come on. Let's go, Simba. I just took Simba out of the room, so now Boo's by himself in here, which is good. It'll give him time to recuperate. Right now, I'm just keeping an eye on Boo. Hopefully, he'll start feeling better and eat some food. You okay, Boo? You okay, Boo? Yeah, he says he still has tummy troubles. Okay, Boo. It is 1.45 p.m. and here's Boo. He's been resting in his room, getting some sun by the window. And I have a churu, so I'm gonna see if he'll eat his churu. You want churu, Boo? He did not eat the chicken that I gave him and I also gave him a little bowl of homemade chicken broth. So he's showing interest in the churu, which is good. And he's eating it. So if he eats this, then I'm going to wait about a half hour and see if he throws it up. If he doesn't throw it up, then I could give him another one. Boo just ate about two thirds of this. You want more, Boo? You want more? Yeah, no. He ate about two thirds of it and then he kind of just walked away from it. So we'll see how he does right now. Okay, Boo, I'll be back later. It's 2.51 p.m. There's Sammy. She's laying behind the back door. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's kind of cold though. I'm debating as to whether I want to take one or two litter boxes outside and try scrubbing them out. Especially the one that Boo had diarrhea in. So, I'm uh, finishing my lunch and then I'm going to go outside and see how cold it is. There's Ziggy. She's rolling around in the sun. I had the back door open, but for some reason, Sammy likes to lay behind it instead of in the sun. Maybe she gets too hot because of her black fur. It's three minutes later and she almost completely shut the door. I don't know why she loves laying like this. Hey Sammy. Hey Sammy. It's 5.40 p.m. And Boo's been laying here on the day sofa in this like bed thing that I made for him and he looks so cute in it so I wanted to show you him but as soon as he saw the camera he got up he did not get up before he saw the camera like I walked into the room to shut the windows and turn the light on and I was like looking at him and he wasn't getting up I came back in the room I was looking at him wasn't getting up the minute I turned the camera on then he has to get up okay boo so I did not defrost any raw food for the cats for dinner. I did purchase some boneless chicken breast today. And I also purchased some chicken thighs with bones and skin. And my original plan was to uh, make chicken broth today with the thighs. I mean, I still might do that. It's only around 540 right now. So I could, I could probably still make some chicken broth today. Um, and then I was thinking of taking the uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts and actually cutting them up and giving them uh, to everyone for dinner. But then I would have to mix in organ meats and um, I could always do eggshell powder for bones, but I didn't defrost anything. So 
Um, they're all just going to get canned food today. I'm going to give Boo a little bit of the raw chicken breast to see if he'll eat it. He did not eat any of the reconstituted freeze-dried chicken breast or any of the chicken broth. But Boo really loves fresh raw chicken. He loves fresh raw beef. So I'm going to give him a few pieces and we'll see if he eats that. Um, but everyone else is just going to get some some canned food today. Right, Boo? You, you doing okay, Boo? He's getting him back to normal. You know, he's on the day sofa in his, like, little round bed thing. Um, he's not 100% back, but, you know, he's getting back into his normal routine. I just noticed Boo's nose was running, so I got a tissue and I wiped his nose. Now, he was sneezing the other day. Like, I don't know if it was, like, yesterday or the day before, but I remember I was thinking, oh, no, Boo's sneezing. I hope he's not getting sick. So maybe... Maybe he has some kind of like little bug or something. The other thing I'm very much aware of is the fact that he does have that other fang, which is really long. And, you know, it has been loose. And if it starts getting looser and stuff, um, he will start drooling. Because that's what happened with the fang that um, was pulled. Um, before it was pulled, I did notice that it was like getting longer and there was a little bit of drool on that side so I don't know we have to keep an eye on that when Boo went to the vet the the vet did not want to uh, pull it because the vet said it wasn't like loose enough or or anything it was just you know just starting to get loose so I don't know how fast that is going to proceed for Boo um, you know or if it's gonna take some time I mean there's some drool or something by his fang right now Boo, you want me to wipe your mouth? I just gave Boo a few pieces of raw chicken. He smelled it. And what's he doing? Are you eating it, Boo? That's raw chicken. You like raw chicken. Yeah. Eat that. You don't want it? You want this? You don't want either of them? Okay, there was just some kind of scuffle in my bedroom. Um, Splash and Stella are in my bedroom. Splash is on the bed, Stella is underneath the bed, and Richard was in the room. So I don't know if Richard tried to jump on the bed where Stella was, and then she like flipped out. I don't know. Simba is on a cat tower in the dining room, so I don't think he was involved. Eat the food, Boo. You're okay. Boo's starting to become his usual self again. I can tell that his personality is returning. Come on, Boo. You want your chicken? He was so close to eating it. Like, he was so close to eating it. Eat your chicken. Are you going to eat your chicken, boo? Eat your chicken, boo. His fur is getting so long. I don't know if you could tell, but when I was petting him before, I'm like, his fur is getting so long. What are you doing, buddy? Come on. Eat your chicken. Eat your chicken, boo. You love raw chicken. You love it. Here, you want it? You want another churu? Let me give you a churu. So he did good with the churu. He ate like two thirds of a churu before. He did not throw it up. Maybe what I'll do is I'll go get another churu. See if he'll eat that. You're gonna stay in the room tonight, Bo, okay? Oh, you wanna leave? You wanna leave already? Okay. You stay there. I'm gonna give him a red churu, which is tuna and crab. Let's see if he eats this whole thing. If he eats the whole thing, we're making progress. It's a little hard to do this just with one hand.
Boo really enjoys time alone in this room. Like, he loves having special treatment. Stella hates being in this room by herself. Um, Splash and Simba, like, they'll be in this room for a few hours, maybe, you know, for, like, probably up to eight hours. Then they really want to leave the room. Like, especially if I have to try to keep them in here for some kind of, like, recovery or something. They go crazy. They don't want to be in the room. Boo loves this room because we have to remember this was Boo's room. When he first came inside, you know, he was in quarantine in this room. So he still uh, is very possessive of this room and he really enjoys the time in it. Okay, look, we're done. He ate the whole thing. Good job, Boo. So that's that's good progress. It's 6.15 p.m. I sat down on the day sofa to respond to a few text messages. And look what Boo did. He ate his raw chicken. And he's looking for the churu that I've been holding. I came back in the room to give this to him. But then I saw the text messages and I had to reply. And then he ate his chicken. So now I'm going to give him the churu. And then he'll be done for a while. I don't want him to eat too much just in case he still has an upset stomach. It's 5.20 a.m. and here's Simba. He just threw up. It's 9.45 a.m. Here's Simba and here's Boo. Boo seems to really like this blanket that I put on the rug. And Simba's relaxing in this cat bed. For some reason, the cats really like a cat bed here. Stella was laying in this bed last night. Now Simba's in it. So Simba does not feel well today. He has whatever Boo had yesterday. His symptoms are exactly the same as Boo's symptoms. So he threw up at first, and then he used the litter box like Boo did, and I think he probably has diarrhea like Boo had. And then he threw up a second time, um, which was just more liquidy. It wasn't like food that he was throwing up the second time. It was exactly like what Boo threw up the second time. And then he's just been relaxing since then. So I'm not going to worry about him eating breakfast or anything later on in the day. I'll try to give him a churu, see if he has any interest in that. And then hopefully by dinner time, um, I'll be able to give him just some, some plain chicken, which I probably have to go out and buy more. No, I don't. I'm going to defrost the stuff that I froze yesterday. So yesterday Boo had some plain raw chicken breast and that sat really good with his digestion. And what I did with the rest of the chicken breast that I bought is I chunked it up and I froze it in meal sized portions. So what I'll do today for dinner is defrost one of those meal sized portions and then I'll take Simba's portion and I'll give it to him plain without anything mixed into it. And um, hopefully He'll eat that for dinner, and that'll help settle his stomach. I like that Boo's sitting here near Simba and hanging out with him. He's probably telling Simba that everything's going to be all right, and he'll get through it just like Boo got through it. Right, Boo? It's 11.15 a.m., and here's Simba. Here's Boo. I put Simba in Boo's room um, before I gave any of the cats breakfast. He was sitting in the hallway, um, kind of watching the kitchen, and... I know he doesn't feel well, so I figured, let me put him in here. He can lay in the sun like Boo did yesterday. And that's what he's been doing. And Boo finished his breakfast. He just walked in the room. And all the cats are eating their breakfast, or they've already finished. And I washed out all of the water bowls upstairs. Give all the water bowls a good scrubbing in case any germs are being passed through water bowls or anything. And yesterday I did scrub out the litter box um, where Boo had diarrhea. Um, it was warm enough to take it outside and scrub it down. So if I have a chance to do maybe another litter box or two today, um, I could do that. We just have to see how today goes. I have a lot of work that I have to get done. I'm trying to edit a video. I've been trying to edit this video for the past four days and I just keep getting distracted with other things. Uh, that need to get done like work stuff so yeah I'm going to keep an eye on Simba I'll keep the two of them in here today and hopefully everything will go well
It's 11.15 a.m. and I just came in to check on Boo and Simba. So here's Boo. And here's Simba, but I wanted to show you where Simba was. Simba was in this little cubby hole bed. And of course he came out now that I'm here. Okay, jump up, jump up. No, you're sick, Simba. You don't have enough strength. Okay, don't jump up. Come over here. This was the bed that Simba had been laying in. And look, good thing I had paper towels in it because he had some like diarrhea on his butt. I'm gonna get some fresh paper towels. It is 5.15 and here's Simba. He was in that little cubby bed in the corner when I came in and I brought some churus into the room. I wanna see if Simba will want one. It looks like he wants a blue one. Here's Boo, he was laying on the day sofa. Okay, I'm gonna give Simba one first. We'll see if Simba will eat it and then Boo will get one. Here's Simba eating. Part of the churu. I don't know if he's gonna eat the whole thing. Cause yesterday Boo only ate part of it. And then later he ate a full one. Although Simba did not have any breakfast. And he's just been relaxing all day. When Simba eats a churu or a squeeze up, sometimes he likes to take a break, like as he's eating it. Stella and Boo will just like eat the whole thing. And then this is what Simba does. He'll like pause for a little while. Maybe he doesn't want any more. This is kind of what Boo did yesterday with the first one. You don't want it? Would you like it? No? You don't want it? Oh, now he wants it. Simba ate about half of the churu before walking away. He's over there. So Boo says he's gonna finish it. I just opened the purple one to see if Simba would eat this one. He does not want it at all. So I'm giving it to Boo. It's 5.15 p.m. and I wanted to check on Simba because I put him in Boo's room with some plain chicken and he did not finish it. Like, he ate some of it. Um, and then when I opened the door, he flew out. So, Boo would gladly eat this right now. <laughs> but I'm putting Boo's dinner and everyone else's dinner together. Not yet, Boo. This is not yours. This is Simba's. This is Simba's, okay? It seems that Simba wants to eat with the other cats, so I gave him the same plate and I just gave him like a quarter portion of what everyone else is having. So everyone else is having some chunky chicken and I forgot to defrost organ meats, so I put in a little bit of cod liver oil and I added some eggshells because this food does not have bones in it and then there's supplement mix and yeah. So I tried to make it a complete meal. And look at Simba, he's almost done with what's on his plate. So I guess he's getting his appetite back. Notice he's eating the plain chicken. He didn't want to eat by himself in Boo's room. So he wants to eat with everyone else, which is good. Good job, Simba, you gonna finish this? Here, there's a few more pieces there. There's a few more pieces there, Simba, you could eat them. He doesn't have to eat them because, you know, Boo only ate just like, the portion that Simba is eating now. I'd rather he ate just a little bit and then you know, we'll see how it does on his stomach, if he vomits or not, and then um, you know, maybe they'll get some crunchies later. Like Boo got some crunchies last night and he was fine. It's 5.30 p.m. and look at this. I don't know who that is, it's not Bob. It's a tabby cat. I can't tell if the ears tipped or not. It's hard to see. Um, so Ziggy just threw up 
on the windowsill in the living room behind the curtains. So I cleaned up the windowsill, cleaned up the curtains as best as I could. I really need to, you know, remove them and have them. I don't know if I have to have them dry cleaned or put them in the laundry, um, but I spot cleaned them um, pretty well. And then I, I just came over here to put garbage into the garbage can and I looked outside and I saw a cat. I was like, oh, who is that? I thought it was Bob, but it's not Bob. Ziggy's looking. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I don't know who that cat is. It's 8 a.m. And today I woke up to the sound of Splash throwing up. Well, I didn't actually wake up to the sound of Splash throwing up. I woke up maybe 10 minutes before that and I was laying in bed watching a video on my iPad and then I heard the sound and it was not a big sound. It was almost a silent sound, but I was like, who is that? I immediately got up and I saw Splash over here, which made me think it was Splash because here's Stella in this cat tower. Here's Boo on his day sofa. And here's Simba in this cat bed. So I know it's Splash. So Splash is the fourth cat to vomit this week. Um, probably within the past five or six days. And first it was Boo. Then it was Simba. Then it was Ziggy. Then it was Simba. And now it's Splash. So I'm starting to think... Maybe it's food related and the common denominator would be the dry food, the crunchies. And in the past, um, a few years ago in early 2022, when all the cats in the house were sick, and this is before the Lucky Seven were inside, uh, when Stella Splash, Simba and Boo were all sick at the same time, I was able to trace it back to a bag of crunchies. Um, and that was a bag of Arcana Crunchies. Um, I never bought that again. It was the first time I bought that brand. I never bought it again. Um, so maybe this is related to the Crunchies, but they're not all sick. Um, last time all of them were sick with vomiting and diarrhea. This time, um, it's just like vomiting and it seems to be working its way through the cats. Um, uh, because Boo's been fine since... Um, he had like a 24 hour bug. Simba had the same thing Boo had, and then he was fine for a day, and then he went back to um, vomiting and diarrhea. And Ziggy vomited yesterday, now today Splash is vomiting. Maybe it's a coincidence, maybe with Splash it's just a hairball. Um, I don't know what the deal is with Ziggy. I did not find any other vomit downstairs, and I haven't seen any signs of diarrhea in the litter boxes downstairs. So, I don't know. Basically, all of the cats are now under observation for the next several days to see what's going on. It is now 9.20 a.m. and here's Splash. She's back here by the door. And it seems that Splash has the same thing that both Boo and Simba had because he just went through his second round of vomiting. Um, and he did his first round of vomiting a little over an hour ago. And then I just heard what sounded like more vomiting, and sure enough, it was in my bedroom. So I'm going to go clean that up. And if he does have the same thing that Boo and Simba had, then diarrhea will be next for him over the course of the day. I don't expect him to eat his breakfast, and yeah, hopefully he'll be okay. Look at this. Look at this. Look. I've never seen this cat before. I don't know where it came from. I'm just about to take the garbage out and go out and grab dinner. And this cat has showed up on the patio. I don't know if it sees the other cats in the window downstairs, but look at this cat. I've never seen it before. Look at this. This must not be one of the feral cats around here. Well, first of all, the ear is not tipped. It looks like a young cat and it looks friendly because it's coming right up to the door. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. something's going on downstairs. Just came outside to take the garbage out. Look at this, look at this. 
Hello? Hello? Do you belong to somebody around here? You okay? You okay? Here's somebody who's been hanging out in Boo's room today. So the cat ran into my neighbor's yard, the neighbor that has an indoor outdoor cat and the neighbor that like lost their cat last year, their cat just disappeared last summer. That's the neighbor's yard that it went into. So here's Boo. I'm thinking maybe they got another cat and maybe this cat belongs to them. Once again, I've never seen it before. And also I have not seen their other cat on my security camera footage in a while. The only one I ever see on the security camera footage recently has been Bob, who's like the bigger plumper tabby. And also there's been what looks like an orange tabby. Um, so I don't know if their other cat that they let outside disappears also. Um, I don't know what the situation is, but because the cat ran into their yard, that makes it th that makes me think it's their cat also because the cat seemed to be friendly. So I'm going to go out and hopefully grab some dinner and then I'll be back in a little while and I'll feed the cats. I took their food out a little bit later today, so uh, it still needs some time to defrost. And I did flea comb Boo yesterday. He has no fleas, so I don't know why he's itching. Here's Splash. He's been hanging out on my bed today. I hope he feels better. One of the things... Oh, there's Stella. She just took a flying leap off the cat tower. Hey, Stella. One of the things that I did today was I took all of the litter boxes outside and scrubbed them down and put fresh litter in them. So that took a few hours this afternoon. And um, yeah, I haven't found any like diarrhea all over the place today or anything. So that's a good sign. It's 10 a.m. and I just finished brushing Simba and Stella and Boo and I'm starting to get a lot of cat hair off of them so it looks like shedding season has begun and maybe that's why there's been more vomiting recently. Maybe they're starting to get hairballs because they're starting to shed again. So I have not been brushing them on a daily basis, but I am definitely going to start brushing them on a daily basis. Now I make it part of my morning routine and they get brushed before they get fed. Here's Splash. He's being very camera shy this morning. So I just wanted to mention that he's feeling better than he was yesterday. And, and last night he had some crunchies with everyone. And I gave everyone some boiled chicken, and I don't know if he ate that. I also gave him his dinner on my bed because he didn't come to eat with everyone else. He just stayed on the bed. So I gave him, first I gave him a small portion of his dinner, and then I checked on him a while later and he ate it. So then I gave him the rest of his dinner and I checked on it a while later and that was mostly eaten also. Now I don't know 100% that he's the one that ate it, and maybe like Simba ate it or someone else, but I mean, he was eaten, and he did come out to eat crunchies later, so that was a good sign, and he's been acting normal since then, no more vomit, so maybe it was just, you know, something that he went through yesterday. It's 10.50 a.m., and we have another beautiful, sunny day today, so I'm going to head out and run some errands and take care of some things this morning, and here's Boo. He's by the window in his room. I just opened it a few inches, so I opened it much wider this morning, turned the heat off, but then... It got cold, so I put the heat back on and I shut the windows, but now I'm going to open it up just a little bit so he has some nice air today, right, Boo? But I wanted to show you what's been going on the past few days. So here's Boo hanging out by his window, and here's the day so far. Hey, Boo. And I was looking for Simba yesterday. I couldn't find him anywhere. But guess where Simba is? Guess what Simba's new morning routine is after breakfast? He hangs out underneath the day sofa. Then he spends the day with Boo in Boo's room, right, Simba? Well, sometimes not the full day, just until I come back and then I open the door. Then all the cats mingle with each other. But I don't like to let them mingle with each other when I'm not in the house. Because let me tell you what happened last night. I don't think I filmed it because it happened so quickly. So I was in the other room working on my computer. It was in the evening. I was making up for some time that I lost earlier in the day. 
all of a sudden I heard two cats yowling at each other and I was like, what is going on? So I realized it was coming from Boo's room. Right, Boo? It was coming from this room. And I walked in the room and let me tell you what I found. Yesterday, both of these litter boxes had been taken outside, scrubbed, and fresh litter was put in both of them. Boo was in this litter box and he was wanting to come out of the litter box, but Nancy was sitting right here, about a foot away from the litter box, and she was yelling at Boo. Boo was yelling at her, and I thought for sure it was gonna end up in a fight. And I did something that probably wasn't very smart, but what I did was I stepped in between them and I was facing Nancy. I was like, okay, Nancy, you have to leave. So she backed away and she went underneath the day sofa. And then what I had to do is I had to leave the room and come back with the mini tambourine. And I just lifted up the blanket, shook the tambourine, and she flew out of the room. And the rules in this house are that we don't attack other cats. Now, as I'm saying that, I'm thinking about Boo's harness. Because when Boo was being reintegrated with Stella, Splash, and Simba after being separated from them, I had to put a harness on him to make sure that he wasn't jumping on them. Because that's what he kept wanting to do. Jump on them, attack them, and they didn't like it. And using the harness on him definitely helped with that. So now I'm thinking maybe I need to put a harness on... Nancy, or maybe I need to put her princess dress on. Maybe she'll have completely different behavior if she's walking around in a princess dress. So I'm going to make a mental note of that. Maybe I'll try that later tonight. It's February 10th, 9.25 a.m. Let me tell you what happened here about 15 minutes ago. I walked over to this back window and there was a tabby cat up here. I thought it was Nancy. So I looked at the tabby cat and I made a motion to pet it. And then I realized it was Eva because she was like, you know, afraid of me backing away. And then she was kind of like moving back and forth, trying to get away from me. But as this was going on, uh, Eva had been hissing a little bit. So Nancy came over to see like what's going on. So Nancy jumped up here. Eva was here. And I was able to pet Eva. I started just like really slowly and gently like on her back. And I just kept going, just gradually petting more and petting more and petting more. And before you know it, she was letting me pet like the back of her neck. She didn't want me to pet like her head area, like that still freaked her out. So I just was super, super calm. And I was just petting her like I was just petting her and petting her and then eventually I was able to pet her head, pet her ears, like the side of her cheeks and I petted Eva at least 15 minutes if not almost 20 minutes and I just wanted to keep going because I was like I don't want her to forget this. Like I didn't want it to be like okay I'm gonna pet her for 30 seconds and then she's gonna forget it and she's gonna be afraid of me. I wanted to just keep petting her and petting her and petting her for as long as I could. So what happened was Sammy jumped up here at one point to see what was going on and offer support and comfort to Eva and then Ziggy did and at one point Ziggy was here, Eva was here and the two of them were like laying with their heads together and I was petting both of them. So these cats really have a strong bond with each other because it's as if they knew Eva was going through something and then they came up here to give their support. Here's Eva now. See, she just hissed at me, but hopefully maybe she'll remember that she received some pets. Like, I want to consider Eva one of the petted because I just pet her for at least 15 minutes. At least 15 minutes. So I'm hoping that she's going to be less afraid of me. Now, I did try to give her some treats afterward, but she's afraid of me and the treats. This is Richard. I really want Eva to graduate from being one of the unpetted to one of the petted. So last night, the cats all had catnip down here. Here's Ziggy. I didn't give them much catnip. I only gave them a little bit of catnip on these two round mats, and then I put a little bit of catnip in each of the beds. The reason why I did that is because Nancy was relentless with her meowing at the door. And I was like, you guys had dinner. You guys had a snack. I'll give you some crunchies in your, like, crunchy tower. And that's it. You know, you can't just keep eating all night. So I gave them a little bit of catnip. I don't know. Maybe the catnip helped to relax Eva a little bit. I don't know. Here she is now. I am so happy to report that Eva is one of the petted. I don't know if she's going to stay one of the petted. 
but she really enjoyed it. I mean, at one point she was like purring and she was just so relaxed and comfortable after a while. Obviously not at first. At first she was really like nervous, but I have to say, even when I was petting her, she was not as nervous as Splash is. Like Splash still gets nervous when I pet him. Not like he used to. Splash used to get really nervous when I pet him, but not so much anymore. He has to be in the mood for it. But she just like totally calmed down and like melted into the petting and I just hope I hope it's stuck like I hope she remembers it and she's not like completely afraid of me anymore but I know if I move toward her right now she'll run it's about 10 20 a.m. I'm just about to give the cats their breakfast I'm preparing it right now and there's a little Eva right here this is little Eva look she won't come up to me but she came really close and she took a piece of freeze-dried chicken, um, not from my hand, but I put it on the floor near her and then she took it. So that's a first for her. Usually she hangs out in the back when I'm putting their meal together, but now she's like here in the front. You want another piece of chicken? Look at this, look. Look, you want a piece of chicken? She's been running away from me when I try to give her, like, treats or more pets. But I'm going to take that as a good sign. Goldie usually likes the chicken. Goldie will take a piece of chicken and run. Here, go. Goldie. See, she takes it, and then she runs. <laughs> okay. Look, here's Eva. Look, there's Eva. I think Eva is going to come around. You going to come around, Eva? Eva, you want more pets? Come here, Eva. Come here, Eva. Come here, I'll give you more pets. No? Look at this. Look, it's Eva. Hey, Eva. I'm putting your food together. You want to eat breakfast? There's Eva and Ringo. If I could get Eva to be one of the petted, maybe Ringo would be next. There's Ringo and Eva. Hey, Eva. Hey, Eva. Eva, are we friends now? Eva, are we friends now? We friends now? Come here. She says not yet. Hey, Goldie. Goldie will eat treats out of my hand. She'll smell my fingers, but she doesn't like pets. Yet. There's Eva and Goldie. Okay, come on, guys. Come on, Eva. Come on, Eva. No more pets? No? No more pets? It is mail time for the cats. I have some cards and some boxes. Let's open them up and let's see what the cats got. Okay, let's start with this card. Ooh, check this out. It says New Year. And who's joining me here? This is Nancy. Nancy was sleeping in a cat tower. Oh look, it's a it's a whole page. Oh look, it's artwork. Look how cute that is, Nancy. That is so cute with three ladies celebrating New Year's. It says 2024 Christy Horde, and I don't want Nancy ruining that. Thank you so much, Christy. Did you draw that yourself? That is really awesome. This is for someone nice to know. You're a very special person and you're wonderful to know. Four things just seem to brighten up no matter where you go. You're thoughtful and considerate, especially friendly too. How wonderful it is to know someone as nice as you. And here's Ziggy. And this is have a happy Valentine's Day. And this says, hope your Christmas was merry. Happy New Year from Christy. Since so much time passed, I decided to send you this instead. Love, Christy. Thank you so much, Christy, for this awesome Valentine's Day card. Valentine's is in just a few days. And thank you so much for this 
awesome artwork. If you see this video, leave a comment below. Let me know if you drew this and colored this. This is really, really cool. Thank you so much. We hope you are having a very happy new year and we wish you a very happy Valentine's Day also. Here's another envelope and look at the sticker. It's a tarot card, uh, but it's cats. It's the Empress. That's really cool. Look at this! Isn't this adorable? It's like a card, but it's a cat! That is so cute! And then you open up the arms. Look how cute that is! LF and Boo Crew, thank you again for the lovely tribute video for my mom, Zoa. It really makes me happy that she brought so much love and joy to you all. Love, Jessica, Becky, and Joyce! Thank you so much, Jessica, Becky, and Joyce, for this adorable note. I'm very happy that you enjoyed the tribute video to Zoa. I know we all miss her very much. We miss her presence in the comment section of the videos, and we also miss her presence in the chat section of the video premieres. And we hope you guys are doing well. I know it's a really big adjustment and we send you lots of thoughts and condolences for the loss of your mom. Thank you so much for this adorable cat. Now we have some boxes to open. Let's open this box. This says it is a Hepper Nom Nom Modern Pet Dish. That's cool. Look at that. Look who this is. It's Ringo. Hey, doing Ringo? Hey, doing Ringo? So earlier today was the first time that I was able to really, really pet Eva. I petted her for a really long time. And look at this. Now Ringo's here. He's coming over to me. Maybe he's claiming the pet dish. This is what it looks like. It says, adding function to food time, the Nom Nom offers great looks, healthy eating, and clean floors. Wide lip on base catches drips and crumbs, keeping your floor clean. Ziggy's here, Nancy's here, Ringo's walking away. Two stainless steel bowls lift out for easy cleaning, dishwasher safe, top rack, Bowls raised off the floor for healthier eating angles. Unless your cat has perfect manners, you'll appreciate that the Nom Nom has a wide lip to catch crumbs and drips. In the frenzy of food time, the Nom Nom helps to keep your floors clean. Even better, the wide and shallow bowls are designed to leave whiskers alone for stress-free feeding. After your little friend has cleaned the plate, you can clean up easily too. The food safe stainless steel bowls lift out of the plastic base and all the parts can go into the dishwasher top rack. That is wonderful. I love anything that can go in a dishwasher. And this is what the pet dish looks like. Here's Ziggy. She's gonna check it out. Checking it out, Ziggy? You wanna put some crunchies in it? You want to eat some crunchies in it? Here. You try it. All right, it looks like the cats approve. There's one little crunchy left. There's one little crunchy left. Here. Oh, Nancy got it. Good job, guys. Good job. Now let's open the big box and see what's in here.
Let's open this. Ooh, Ringo's right here. We have a Hepper nest bed. This says it's a cozy curl up for your critter. The Hepper nest bed is designed with the modern cat in mind. It's the perfect shape and material to curl up for a snooze while keeping your furniture hair free and looking great. Thick fleece liner for maximum coziness. Soft touch base of molded EVA and laminated fabric. Removable fleece liner can be machine washed, warm wash, low dry. Base can be hand washed. And there it shows a happy cat. All right, you're gonna go in it, Nancy? Here you go. So this is really cool. It feels like a bowl, but it also feels like a cat bed. Like it's really, like, it's like plush. You gonna go in it, Nancy? You wanna check it out? You wanna check it out, Nancy? So, in the past, Simba and Stella especially love laying in these large round plastic tubs that I got at Daiso a few years ago. And they kind of remind me of this because um, they're a similar size to this. Um, but this is much softer inside for them. I don't know if anyone's going to go in it right now. Sammy might. I don't know where Sammy is. Is Ziggy going to check it out? Oh, there she goes. You going to go in? You know, with something new, sometimes they're afraid of it because it kind of just smells different. I think if anyone goes in it right away, it would be Sammy. Is Nancy going to go in there? Ziggy's going to lay down next to it. Who's going in the bed? That's Ringo. That's Ringo. Oh my God, that's Ringo. Neither of these boxes had a note in them uh, to say who this is from. Thank you to whoever sent these products to us. The cats are going to enjoy using them. Who's going to be the first cat to go into... Oh, I know. I might have to put a few crunchies in this. <coughs> Guys, I can't believe Ringo's right here. Like, I could reach out and touch him. Is he? Lay down. Lay down, Sammy. Okay, I think I know what I need. I think I need a, a little nip. I put a little catnip inside.
Sammy says she'll have the box. Nancy doesn't want Ringo going into her bed. <laughs> She's like, this is my bowl. It looks like Nancy has made herself very comfortable in this nest bed. While Nancy is in her bed, Siggy has been getting a gazillion pets. I put more crunchies in this dish. I actually put some all around the edges of it and also on the inside. So it makes them work for it a little bit which is good. They have to use their paws to get it out. And it's definitely big enough that quite a few cats can share from it with regards to the dry food, so this is nice. There's Richard. Hey, Richard. Ziggy's in the bed now. Who are we missing? Goldie and little Eva. I think they're downstairs. It's 11 a.m. and I am taking some of my plants and I am putting them in the greenhouse 
For some reason, this spider plant is irresistible to cats. You see Nancy trying to eat it. Well, the reason why it looks like it looks is because the cats have had a feast on it. And they eat it and they haven't gotten sick off of it. Um, this was in Boo's room originally. And I had it like on the table. Stop eating it, Nancy. And then I walked in one day and I saw Ziggy eating it and I was like, oh my gosh. So all the cats had a feast on this. They haven't really touched the fern much as far as eating it. But as you can see, it's like half dead because I have to keep moving this around to a location where they're not going to be able to knock it over. They've knocked this fern over multiple times. Originally, it was on a shelf in Boo's room and it was doing so good there. Like I had all of these in, in the room with Ditto. When Ditto was here, I kept buying plants and putting it in the room, figuring, you know, they would add some oxygen to the room, make things more cheerful for him, and maybe bring some of, like, the outside inside, make him feel more at home because, you know, he lived his life outside with greenery. So all of the plants love that room. They do so good in that room. The problem is with the kittens now, you know, the Lucky Seven, wherever I put plants in that room, they will go to the plants and certain plants they'll leave alone other plants they will try to eat or try to knock down and with this fern because of you know how these like leaves are they love to knock this over if it's on a table or an end table they like to pull it down and if it's on a shelf they like to pull it down so i've decided that i'm going to put both of these in the greenhouse and we'll just see how they do in the greenhouse you know things have been warming up a little bit and i've been moving some of my other plants into the greenhouse they haven't completely died so maybe they'll like it better in the greenhouse and then maybe i could figure out someplace else to put these or i don't know we'll figure it out so that's the plan today I'm here in the greenhouse and it is about 68 degrees inside the greenhouse. It is 41 degrees outside the greenhouse. So um, this greenhouse has been staying nice and warm and look at the geraniums. I keep them here as my indicator of how the greenhouse is doing at night. And if the greenhouse gets below freezing at night, the geraniums are going to die. But look how they are thriving right now and they're really loving it. So it's been staying above freezing inside the greenhouse at night and I have two strands of the old-fashioned large Christmas lights that I have going around the shelving and then I have this really small 200 watt heater here on the ground so between the 200 watt heater and two strands of the Christmas lights it's been doing really really good this year the other thing that I did was I insulated the floor of the greenhouse so underneath this rug um, they're like large sheets of star foam. Um, I got it at Lowe's. It's like an insulation kit. Um, so I put them under the rug. And then here on this wall that doesn't get any sun, like there, there's no sun that comes through here because of like the fence on the other side. Um, I have this shiny bubble wrap and that's really, really helped to uh, keep heat in at night also. So that's been working well. And then of course... And then of course I have all of the the walls and the rest of the ceiling uh, wrapped in plastic. These are like plastic tablecloth covers and they're doing really good this year. They're being held in by these clips except in certain areas of the ceiling. Like here you can see the edge is falling down because you can't put clips around the edge over there. So I had to use duct tape and, you know, after a certain while, duct tape will lose its stickiness. I believe I use Gorilla Tape. Um, so I just keep pushing that back up. I might have to get some more tape and just put some fresh tape on there. But um, I'm really happy with how the plants are doing. My Meyer lemon tree is looking phenomenal. I've never had it look so good through the winter before. Usually there's much more yellowing on it. So this is doing really good. This is my first year with the banana tree. I don't know what to expect with it, but look, I mean, it is still growing um, fresh leaves and there's some new leaves on the bottom. So it's still alive. It has not died. This is a fig tree. That's a fig tree. And it looks like there is some lettuce growing in this fig tree. I mean, these look like lettuce, but I don't know. I could be wrong. So here's the new home for this fern for now. 
Um, it's near some strawberries, um, these petunias. I think, yeah, I'm gonna have to give some water to stuff in here. Um, rose, my bay leaves, there is the spider plant. And on the bottom are my calibracoas. They need water, definitely, over there, too. And then there's more geraniums on the bottom, too, and they all still have green leaves. I mean, some of them are doing better than others, but maybe they'll all get through the winter. It's 11.45 a.m., and there's Ringo. So this is like a little ledge that I have near this window. And I used to have plants on it. A while ago, I actually had um, Hydrox and Ditto's urn on it, along with some plants. And what happened was, the Lucky Seven keep trying to uh, knock down the plants on here, because they want to jump up on here and look out the window. And I normally keep these blinds pretty shut, because, you know, my neighbor's house is not too far away. And that's what Ringo's watching right now. So they're having someone outside working on their uh, air conditioning compressor, like the big unit outside the house when you have central air. And I was outside before checking on the greenhouse and I noticed that someone was out there working on it. And I noticed that Ringo keeps wanting to jump up here to watch them. So I cleaned everything off of this shelf, off of this ledge. And that's what he's smelling. He's smelling the plants that were on there. And that's one of the reasons why I put some plants in the greenhouse today. Because I have no place to put them. Um, the ones that I took off this ledge, I put um, in my bedroom where the two that I put in the greenhouse used to be. And we'll see how they do there. Because, you know, plants do well in some rooms and not well in other rooms. And the, the plants that were up here weren't doing well anymore. They were doing really well when the trees were outside because then this window got, like, a lot of shade. But now that the trees are gone, it's getting sun. And some of the inside plants don't like that much sun. Anyway, so Ringo's there right now. He's probably going to jump. It's 1.23 p.m. I'm sitting here editing a video or at least trying to while I'm dealing with other work projects. And Ringo's back. He came back about 10 minutes ago, maybe. And I guess he likes sitting here. There are plenty of other cat towers for him to choose, but I guess he likes this window. There are still some very uh, young trees outside of this window. Maybe he's looking at birds in the trees, I don't know. The neighbor's house is probably around 20 feet away. I'm zoomed in on Ringo, so it kind of makes everything appear closer than it is. It's 8.45 a.m. Good morning, Stella. Good morning, Simba. Good morning, Boo. Good morning, Splash. Today we are getting a winter storm. It's much worse than I thought it would be because I was really hoping it would just be rain, but it's not rain. But the temperature was supposed to be like in the mid 30s, like 37, 38 degrees. But it must not be because it's snowing instead of raining. So I'm definitely not happy about this. We already have several inches of snow right now. It is very pretty, but I don't know how much more we are going to get. I was talking to someone on the phone yesterday who lives about 20 minutes west of here. And they were telling me that they're getting 8 to 12 inches, supposedly. So I don't think we're supposed to get that much here. Um, I think the forecast was for around 6 inches. 
but any snow is too much. I hate it so much. And um, so that's what's going on today. And this is what the patio looks like. To me, it looks like we already have a good four to five inches of snow. So I am going to get dressed and get the cats fed and myself fed and then maybe head outside with the shovel to start shoveling some areas off. Um, I don't know if it's light or heavy snow. And I don't know, maybe I'll take the snow blower out. I don't know, I have to check the forecast and see when it's supposed to stop. Sometimes I find it easier to get rid of snow in segments versus waiting until it all stops. Like if we're supposed to get a lot of snow, sometimes it's much easier to do it like a little at a time, go out you know, every few hours. So we'll see. It's 9.30 a.m. and I just opened the back door and look at that. That is the heated water bowl. The snow is as high as the top of the heated water bowl. I did not expect to be getting this much snow at all. So I looked at the weather forecast today versus yesterday. Yesterday they were forecasting our temperatures to be around 38 degrees today. And right now our temperatures are around 32 to 34. So that's why we have snow instead of the rain or wet mix that we're supposed to get. I opened the back door so the cats could look out. Here's Ziggy and there's Nancy. I'm gonna put the lights on for them downstairs. Last night I gave them some wrapping paper, which is what we see here. And I put it underneath this toy that they have. This was actually free wrapping paper from um, the TJX companies this year. So like right before Christmas, they had um, like a special shopping event for their rewards members. And when you went, they gave you rolls of free wrapping paper. So of course I took it. I used it for Christmas. And now I have some extra rolls and that's what I've been using for the cats. So I put a sheet of wrapping paper on the floor yesterday and then I put their toy on top of it. And it looks like they really enjoyed playing with it. And what I'm thinking, <laughs> here's Richard. And what I'm thinking of doing today is finding like an old vinyl tablecloth and putting that on the ground and then taking the little kitty pool that I have and putting some snow in it and letting the cats play with some snow inside. How you doing, Nancy? Want some pets? Want some pets? Here's Ringo and little Eva. And I don't know if you could see through the window, but yeah, there's like a wall of snow outside the window. There's no snow directly outside the window because that's where I have the solar panels and they kind of, you know, keep a, a dry area underneath them. But past them, there's like a wall of snow. Here's Nancy, she's already looking outside. Yesterday I put a bunch of bird seed and peanuts on the patio because we were expecting some kind of bad weather today. And the birds and squirrels really enjoyed them. But I'm not gonna put any more out until the snow stops and I clear out part of the patio. It's 10.15 a.m. and today the cats are trying Nature's Raw Instinct Beef Bites today. They've never had these before. They usually have the chicken bites, which everyone except for Boo usually likes. And I thought we'd try the beef bites. And I don't know what's going on with these. So I did put a little bit of freeze-dried chicken on top just to entice the cats. And so Stella walked away from hers. Boo's now eating something off of Stella's plate. I don't know if he's just eating the chicken or if he's eating beef bites. Sim is trying his. Stella is eating on Splash's plate and there's Splash. He's just sitting there. So I'll give Splash Boo's plate. I don't know if Splash is going to eat it because sometimes he's afraid of new foods and Simba just walked over to Splash's plate now. In the past the cats have tried Nature's Variety frozen beef and cod. They were not fans of that so I thought this was just plain beef, maybe they would like it. And Boo seems to be enjoying it, so 
That is good because if Boo likes this one, then it means that when the cats eat the chicken bites, which he does not like, then he could eat these instead. Unless he's only eating the freeze-dried chicken off the top of them. I have to watch him to make sure he doesn't eat too much and gorge himself and then vomit. I just gave Simba Boo's plate. If Boo's going to eat on Simba's plate, then Simba could eat on Boo's plate. So Boo's actually eating the little beef bites, which is good. Stella's eating the beef bites. She seems to like them. And even Simba has decided to eat some. Splash has walked away, but we know that Splash is afraid of new foods, so I'll pick up his plate and I will put it near him later and maybe he'll go and eat it. Here's Splash and here's his food. I gave it to him in my room because sometimes he feels safer eating here. Look at this. Look, Splash ate all of his breakfast and I know it was him because I shut the door. He was the only one in the room. Good job, Splash. And here's what's left on the kitchen plates. So overall, I would say that this food was a success with the OG4. I also fed it to the Lucky 7 and they're still eating or some of them are still eating. Sometimes they don't eat right away, but they'll come back and eat it. So we'll see what goes on with this food over the course of the day. It looks like maybe half of the plates are going to be cleaned off right now. And then maybe someone will come back and eat the other half. And the snow continues to fall. Look at this. There's a bird on the snow. And now it's getting higher than the heated water bowl. Also, I need to go and put the heater and the lights on in the greenhouse because they're not on right now. And it's a little bit colder in there than I'd like it to be. It's 11 a.m. and here's Nancy. She's been trying to catch snowflakes through the window. I'm just about to go outside and start clearing stuff off. It's 12.10 p.m. and look at what the cats got. They got a whole bunch of snow. So I just brought in three of those white plastic tubs full of snow and I put it in this kiddie pool in the kitchen. I decided to do it in the kitchen instead of downstairs just because it's going to be easier to clean up on the floor than on the carpet. And I have this like summer vinyl tablecloth on the bottom. And so far, no one is interested in this at all. I'm going to take off my boots and my coat and see if Simba wants to play. I just came in my room to get Simba and let me show you what I found. The first thing I saw was some vomit on the rug. And then I saw this vomit on the rug. And I found this vomit on this cat blanket. So I'm happy it's on the cat blanket because I'm going to put this in the wash. Um, it doesn't seem to have gone through to the um, vomit blanket, but I'm going to put this in the wash second. I like to wash this separately. Um, so I'm going to put all the cat uh, blankets in the wash. I don't know who did this. I don't know if it was... Simba or Splash? Simba, did you throw up? Was that you? I want to say it was Splash because I feel like maybe Simba was up here the whole time. As if I don't have enough to do dealing with snow outside, now I get to come inside and deal with vomit. Boo, you want to come play with the snow? Nobody wants to play with the snow? We have all this snow and nobody wants to play with it. Remember, I don't think these cats ever experience snow outside. Because if they were born in March or around there, they became house cats before uh, winter. So they spent their first winter inside without snow. Want to go in? Want to stand in the snow? It's 1.27 p.m. I finally got Simba down, or he finally came down on his own. So I brought him over here to the snow. I put him in the snow and he jumped out. I put Sammy in the snow, she jumped out. I put Nancy in the snow, she jumped out. Simba might go back into the snow because he really likes snow. See? 
The noise in the background is the washer and dryer downstairs because I'm doing the cat laundry from the vomit. Simba, you gonna go in the snow? You gonna go in the snow, Simba? You love snow. Simba, which tub do you want? The big tub? How about half and half? Half in the big, half in the little. No? Come on, you want to play? Yeah, you want to play with the snow? Snow bath. Snow bath. Snow bath. Go get the snow, Simba. Go get the snow. You love snow. Go get it. Go get it. You want to lay with the snow? You just want to lay with the snow? You want to lay on the snow? That's why I put you in the thing, Simba. I put you in the thing so you could lay on the snow. It is 1.45 p.m. and the snow has stopped falling. It seems that I went out at the perfect time to clear the snow away because it stopped shortly after I was finished and now I don't have to go back to do any more. And it was still uh, somewhat light when I first went out. It was actually very light when I first went out and then as I continued clearing off more snow it gradually got heavier because um, you know it turned over to um, kind of m more of a mixed precipitation. So very thankful that I got it done when I got it done. And I brought snow in for the cats to play with. Nobody wanted to play with it. So I'm going to put the snow back outside what's left of it and clear up a little and clean up a little bit. And I'm really going to try to edit a video, get one posted today. And I have to get actual work done. So a lot to do the rest of the day. Thank you.